The fractal effect can be found under the generate category. And if I add a solid with control Y and name this fractal, and then apply the effect to it, it's going to generate a fractal here inside of After Effects. Now, if you don't really understand what a fractal is, you're in good company. I don't really either. And doing a little bit of research on Google didn't make things any clearer for me because it's a complex set of equations that generates basically an infinite pattern. And I don't really have any practical application for this effect inside of After Effects. So know that upfront. I've never used this intentionally and I don't really see any intentional use for it. Let me know if you have any practical application of this effect in the comments. But there are a number of controls in here that allow you to manipulate how this fractal is actually being displayed. Let's take a look at the controls. We have Set Choice, Mandelbrot, and Julia. And then a couple of other options, but at their core, it's Mandelbrot and Julia. And these are two different fractal patterns that we have to choose from. We can render either one of these with a specific equation. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what these mean, but if you click through them, you can see how they change the pattern. And it applies to either one of these set choices. We can also change Mandelbrot to Mandelbrot inverse. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm not surprised because I've never heard this pronounced before. It could be Mandelbrot for all I know. So please don't judge me. We could also change this to Mandelbrot over Julia, and it isn't really any different over Mandelbrot on its own. Now, there obviously are differences between these different settings. I just, again, have never seen a practical application of this effect, so I'm really not even going to try to understand them when I'm never going to use them. But if you are interested in how all of this works, I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to the After Effects user guide that details every single one of these settings. Now, if we go into the Mandelbrot controls, we can change the X position and the Y position as well as the magnification and the escape limit. But something interesting I found in the user guide is that you can interactively adjust these controls if you have the effects selected and then use the actual After Effects tools. So if I press Z to get to the zoom tool and then click and drag to the right, I can zoom in to any one of these specific parts of the fractal. It's a very unique use of these tools that I've never seen before where it only interacts with the effect and not the comp. As I zoom in closer and closer here, you can see that this is an endless, infinite repeating pattern. And it's not all that quick to render, especially as I zoom in closer, which is another reason why I have no practical application for this effect. I can also switch to the hand tool, pressing H on the keyboard and pan around this way. And the reason it's probably slow to render is because it is a pretty complex calculation that After Effects has to process. And the further zoomed in you go, the more complicated this calculation is. In fact, as I was recording, After Effects just crashed on me, which is why it's reset back to its default. And just further gives me reason to not really ever need this effect. I will say it is interesting and playing around with these settings can give you very different results. You can drastically change how everything is colored under the color menu. Again, read through the user guide if you're interested, but because I just can't think of a reason for actually using this effect in any workflow, other than just being able to display a fractal, I'm gonna say that's all you need to know about the fractal effect in After Effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.